kick to the gut. I like it. <laughs> Yo, it's Mr. Young. And it's for an in the building a week earlier, slightly earlier than our usual Monday, bro. Yeah, just, 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 just a wee little bit because we have a very special guest joining us on the show here today. I mean, you know, I think he made quite a bit of uh, waves in the local Singapore wrestling scene when he announced that he had his own wrestling uh, federation, a new wrestling company, a third. And then we asked the question, remember, on the podcast, mm-hmm. is Singapore ready for a third wrestling company? Yes, that's why. But it's very interesting because mm. uh, he's a well-known name. We've known his name the whole decade that SPW was around. Mm. Um, you might, of course, know him as your Eurasian Dragon, right? That's right. And uh, we will talk with the Eurasian Dragon in just a little while. In the meantime, though, before we do anything, we got to give a big shout out to our main man, our sponsor. If you need to buy, sell, rent or get stuff fixed in your house, because he's a bit of a handyman himself, isn't he? Yes, man. He's the only handyman realtor in Singapore that I know of. Lah. Handyman realtor, wrestling fan as well. Check it out. Look at how happy he is taking a picture of Kenny Omega. Yeah, man. And the <laughs> best part about him is you want to buy a house, you want to talk uh, property with him, you can. And also you can talk wrestling at the same time, bro. Uh-huh. What if I want to buy a wrestling arena? Oh, that one he also can help you fix it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Nick Mark, that's our guy right there. You see the QR code. Uh, why don't you just screenshot if you are watching on the, your phone right now. Right? You just screenshot and then you can contact him via his WhatsApp. That's the QR code. Or you can check out his Instagram account. What is his Instagram account, bro? Uh, at 65 Roofs, R-O-O-F-S, ah. like the roof of the house. Huh? Yeah, he, because that's he will put you under a very nice house. He will settle yes, yes, everything he, under the house. He will, he you know... Put you put under you one roof, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Okay, oh. but he told, he told me, please, uh, if you're not ready to buy a house or talk, property, is fine. Try Do follow him on his Instagram. That's where he puts all his content and you can mm. get to know more about what he does. There you go. 65 Roofs, once again, Instagram, on Facebook. You can reach out to him via WhatsApp if you are in the market. And like we said, we just said, right, even if you're not at this point in your life looking to buy, sell or rent, right? I mean, odds are somewhere down the line, that's going to be the most important thing in your life, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, yes. y- you could have caught me at a time in my life where I was like, eh, all I think about is playing video games, you know? <laughs> so s- save this guy on your social media. So when the time comes, when you're like, okay, you know, it's time to buy a new flat, time to buy a new house. Nick Matt, I know him. Uh, and he's a fellow wrestling fan as well. So on the s- side, y'all can talk about the wrestling too. Yes, for sure. And of course, he's been very happy to support this podcast. Uh, mm. He's been doing uh, This is our third episode that he's supporting it. Uh, so if you guys uh, want to show support back to him, like I said, please follow him back as well. And of course, uh, let him know that Kick to the Gut sent you. Absolutely. Once again, his WhatsApp right there. You can scan it if you are watching the podcast via, you know, your big old monitor at work right now instead of actually doing work. It's okay. We don't judge you, huh? (laughs) You can scan the QR code, get his number, or you can screenshot it and save it. And boom, there you go. Follow his Instagram at 65roofs. Now, without further ado... The main event! I'm starting to become like Mark Henry. I should start growing out the white hair. You think I can oh grow my out God. that look? Bro, shave, shave the botak head first, bro. I don't know if that could work for me, bro. <laughs> my head is like, you know, I have a giant forehead. Anyway, here we go! It's the Eurasian Dragon! Let's go! Good to see you, my friend. Hey, it's good to see you guys again, man. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's been a hello, long... Hello, hello. It's been a while, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. been a while. Thank, uh, thanks for having me uh, on, on your show today, man. Yeah, really Dra- Dragon, you know you hold the record for like the most number of times a wrestler has appeared on our show. I think I think we're going on four or five. Yeah, four. yeah, yeah. I think wow. four. I think four. Because I've, I've, I've appeared with uh, uh, Taufik, with mm. uh, Jack, with Jane and all that in different permutations like, before. But I yes, think yes. this is me alone for the first time, if I'm not wrong. Yes, I- at least once a season. So we are, we, we are on the fifth season. <laughs> So this is, I think this is the fourth time because I remember last year we weren't around. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. so this fourth time. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and this yeah. time, arguably, um, the most change has happened because obviously we want to talk about a, a certain thing that has happened, right? I mean, it's right there yeah. in your name, right there. Um, of course, the second this came out, we were like, oh, what is going on? A third <laughs> wrestling company in Singapore. So you know, let's jump right into the question sure. at hand: sure, Ring sure, sure, sure. of Rebirth. Tell us sure. about Ring of Rebirth. 
Yeah, so I think uh, um, sometimes the, the the longer you stay in the wrestling industry, uh, and mm. this happens to, to, I think, many of us, we we are generally still artists uh, at the end mm. of the day. Uh, we, are, we are sports people, we are performers, but we are, we are pretty much artists and, and art is very subjective, right? And, and we have uh, different interpretations of how we, we, we perceive art to be or different platforms of media for that, for that matter. So I think even for me, like, like wrestling, I've always had uh, uh, certain inclinations to certain forms of wrestling. Mm. Not, not that I, I dislike wrestling because, uh, 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 or not that I dislike certain uh, other forms because I, I do watch uh, lots of different kinds of wrestling nowadays. Um, but I've always had a preference of doing wrestling like a, a certain way. So uh-huh. um, I think this is something that has been on my mind for quite some time, actually. I would say I've had ideas of this for, for almost half a decade, uh, maybe. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I, I knew that that eventually uh, it will come to a point where, where uh, I would have to um, do something different lah, from, from what uh, SPW is presenting or from what Grapple Max is presenting and all that. So uh, after... Uh, uh, slight hiatus from the, the wrestling industry and all that. I, I realized uh, um, because SPW did approach me to, to come back and all that, but I felt this was a good time for me to finally uh, 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 realize some of my other dreams in wrestling, uh, which, which isn't just like solo dreams, but also to provide the new generation of wrestlers mm-hmm. with a different alternative to, uh, to, you know, to proceed towards rather than what's available. Mm-hmm. You mentioned something interesting. You said that you are a fan of a different style of wrestling. Can you explain to us what is that philosophy that uh, Ring of Rebirth is going to be based on? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, I, I like to, to take feedback from people when they watch uh, wrestling, whether it's our local uh, companies or whether it's uh, stuff that we find on YouTube or whether it's from like the WWE Network, you know, that. And, and I try and, 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 and I realize the consensus in general, and I like to ask casual fans this, or I like to ask mm. people who are not wrestling fans this, and often they, they enjoy uh, uh, characterization, dramatizations, and all that. So uh, that's it. Uh, I think it's pretty similar to what I enjoyed growing up, which is basically, I, I was a big fan of the Attitude Era of WCW. Uh, in fact, I'm one of the few people that was a WCW fan first before I, I became oh. a WWE fan, yeah, during the Monday Night uh, Wars and all that. Right. Um, um, Who was the WCW guy then? Um, I mean, oddly enough, it was still like the ex WWE guys, <laughs> like, It was people like Bret Hart and Hollywood Hogan, and you know. And okay. Of course, of course, you've got Sting and Goldberg, who are very captivating characters. But, but of course, like, uh, if we rewind time and all that, and, and this is a story I probably shared with you guys before. What really made me want to be a wrestler was still The Rock, like mm. It was still WWE, yeah, But um. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, like uh, growing up with like uh, being exposed to Southern wrestling, uh, um, like, like after joining the wrestling business, so you know, you tend to just do research and watch different mm-hmm. presentations. <clears throat> so I, I realized I was pretty drawn to, uh, in particular, Memphis wrestling, mm. and um, also like some of the older NWA tapes or, or the stuff you find on the WWE Network, which is like all the territory stuff and all that. Wow. And so this is like Jerry Lawler's Memphis, right? Oh, actually, actually, yeah. In, in a nutshell, one of my new dreams is to be like Jerry Lawler. Like, not the commentator, but the promoter and the uh, coach and the uh, uh, the wrestler like, that he was, which which basically, in a nutshell, in case uh, younger listeners are, are, mm. are watching and they're not uh, aware of what Jerry Lawler's real legacy was, was that um, he was kind of like a interchange, uh, like a melting pot. And he had these strong relationships with like various companies. Uh, he had working relationship or shoot work shoots uh, with the WWF, uh, with ECW, with the NWA, and and you've got a who's who of uh, talent that were, were passing in and out of uh, his promotion. So that is one of uh, the that's one of the reasons for me starting Ring of Rebirth, uh, and and also like as it says in the name Rebirth, um, I think over time you will see some familiar faces uh, come in. But I'm also giving them like a bit of a freedom of expression to to try something a little bit different compared to where they are uh, currently. Like, so, for example, you see a SPW guy come in, but he might be uh, promoted a bit differently. He might be pushed mm-hmm. a bit differently and all that. So, yeah, it's, it's also uh, another avenue for, for local wrestlers to come and apply their trade 
uh, against my students. Uh, and so uh, it's also a good place for my students to uh, gain experience working with people from different uh, companies or countries and all that. Yeah. Mm. So obviously, I mean, you still have that working relationship from the, for, uh, with the folks over at Grapple Max, over with SPW. So uh, we will yeah. expect lots of crossovers and stuff like that. Would you consider it to be canon or it's like, okay, you come into our universe here, you are slightly a little bit, you know, different. <laughs> It's a, it's a very good question. I think like mm. Doctor Strange has like, been a talking point and all that. Multiverse. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and, and just uh, like my admiration for Jerry Lawler and, and what Memphis mm. presented to, to uh, the territories back in the day. Um, I think ultimately every wrestling promotion, we got to respect that each promotion has, has its own like canon or their own head canon, you know, like what mm. happens is according to them and all that. But... Uh, I think the the for, for me the challenge as a promoter or as a as a booker now is to find a balance lah. So you got to mm. respect what SPW or what Grapple Max is uh, pushing with their talent, and we can also still try to walk down a, a new avenue or to also see how they best fit with uh, working with our guys and all that. So so definitely something symbiotic and also something something uh, alternative at the same time lah. Um, I got a question with regards to like uh, you mentioned the you have like your your students. So hmm. have you like set up a training school? Who are yes. people that you're recruiting from? Yeah. What's that whole thing about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, gonna be a bit of a lengthy answer. So originally, sure. of course, uh, uh, and and I'm not doing this alone. I I do have hmm. a, a partner, a silent someone who prefers to be a silent partner, but he is is a, a former SPW crew member lah. Uh, he, he was helping out with SPW for a long time. Also good friends with, with uh, Andrew and, and the old guys and all that. So um, our original plans, we definitely wanted to have our own premises, our own ring, you know, so at least you have a lot more uh, autonomy and all that. Mm. But then after we did the finances for it, uh, like we just checked with the other veterans around the region and all that. Then, wow, shit, man, you realize that <laughs> you're going to be a damn broke guy, man. And then... <laughs> And then someone like me was planning to like uh, get married soon and PTO and all that. Then like, like oh, engagement ring, wedding ring, wrestling ring and all that. Oh, that's a lot of rings. <laughs> <laughs> three rings, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why. So, so like, uh, um, we did a lot of brainstorming. Like, so it was, uh, it's a bit of a personal story, but I'll just share. Uh, it was uh, a catch-up lunch with, with Andrew last year, I think, when, Mm. When we when the pandemic was starting to you know like, like lessen out, uh, uh, you can start to go out again and all that. And then I ran this idea by him lah. What if we use your place where no one else is using? Because they have mm. a structured uh, training schedule. You see, mm-hmm. um, I think Mondays to Fridays or it's like Saturday mm. afternoon or something like that. So so uh, what I thought of was like um, you give me some slots like in the afternoon or you give me slots like on a Sunday mm. or something like that. And then um, I'll I'll, rent, I'll sub sublet from you lah. I'll pay I'll pay you for that. Uh-huh. And then that saves me a lot of money on getting my own ring. So there's just two other rings to get now. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> and then uh, it it also uh, uh, it also like like enhances the local wrestling business in the sense that mm. that money is being circulated within the business and all that. So. Right, um, right. I'm always grateful to SPW. I spent like eight fantastic years there. Uh, lots of ups and downs and all this, but I, I don't regret a thing. And, and mm. I guess this was a good way to also uh, pay it back to them. Lah. Mm. Uh, because uh, they, they, they get a bit of the rental burden lifted. And at the same time, uh, I, I don't lose uh, my bank account. <laughs> I don't go broke. And I also get to fulfill my dream of uh, training mm. like my, my own students in my own uh, style of, of wrestling. Mm. So um, since, since you are working with uh, SPW, uh, Andrew, and all that, with this sort mm. of arrangement, right, is it safe to mm. say that um, you have his blessings to go ahead and, you know, continue this new venture outside of, you know, what was, you know, your, your relationship yeah. with him in SPW? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually had uh, lunch with uh, uh, Andrew and Dennis both to, to mm. like, you know, respectfully tell them, uh, right. this is what I'm, I'm going to bring into to Singapore. Uh, oh. This is what I want to do and... Mm. Uh, uh, both sides have been really gracious both sides have uh. sent a lot of well wishes and I think uh, um, just, just to time, put that in perspective right that would mm. be akin to like freaking Vince McMahon and Tony Khan and who who's in charge of Impact these days uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know so Coach Scott Demore, or Demore yeah. I'm like, not too sure that yeah. would be akin to the three of them sitting together having lunch 
which will never <laughs> yeah. happen. Yeah. Never happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> table for three. Uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't sit. Oh, actually, that would be a great table for three, man. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. I, I, I didn't sit with both of them at the same time. Oh. Uh, it was two separate lunches. Okay, but okay. Uh, the, the food we ate was the same. I think wrestlers all like to eat like this high-protein hot pot kind of <laughs> stuff. So, so strangely, it was the same kind of food that I ate with both Andrew and Dennis separately. And then mm. I, just, I just ran my ideas by them. Uh-huh. And then told them that, yeah, this is what I'm going to do and all that. Um, yeah, and, and, and both sides have been, have been pretty cool. Um, um, I think in recent months or so, it's really cool to see... Uh, uh, external talent appear at like a different uh, promotion show uh, mm. be it at the Grapple Max show or the um, <clears throat> uh, SPW home, Homecoming you know like, it's, it's really nice to see that everyone is really starting to get together and uh, support one another it's very heartening mm. so yeah with Andrew's blessings we we managed to to kind of like have a I wouldn't say a soft launch because I think what's happening next week is the soft launch but it was kind of like a under table not under table like 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 out of the public eye kind of like initial right. training because I right. had two students to begin with. So nice. we, we, we worked from there. And honestly, I was in a bit of a creative rut or in an mm. advertising kind of rut because I didn't know how to launch this. Mm. Like, like the, 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 the artwork, the, the design, the logo, everything was created. Um, like, you know, we have like, like, like different business plans or creative plans, but I, I, I really didn't know how to launch this. So it was also by chance. Um, mm. This was, I think, Good Friday. Uh, SPW, they had their three dorm shows. La, if you recall that time, mm. three shows they're doing in the dorms. So one of the matches was supposed to be a CWE showcase, Sultan Singh against uh, this guy called Rao or something. Hey, both, both of them from, from CWE. La. This is so, an Indian wrestling promotion, right? Yeah, the Great Khali's promotion. So they, okay. they, they do have some guys training in SPW. Of course, uh, Sultan Singh, you all saw... Excellent match with uh, Jack Chong at the, the previous show. Yeah. Uh, at Homecoming, yes. yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, Sultan and Rao were supposed to have a match. And Rao missed his flight. Uh. Uh, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just like sitting at home and I am like working on my day job stuff and all that, right? Um, and suddenly, uh, uh, Big T, Big T gives me a phone call out of the blue. Because, of course, Big T uh, is one of the senior members of SPW. He's one of the guys helping Andrew uh, run the ship there and all that. So, Big T gives me a phone call and he goes like, hey, man, uh, what are you doing tomorrow uh, on Good Friday? I was like, I'm a Catholic. Lah. I'm supposed to fast and all that. I can't eat meat. So no, 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 no. You want to come and do the match on the show for us? And I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> Why not? Oh, <laughs> oh so that was the last minute thing, show, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be a one-off thing. It was supposed to uh, be a one-time deal because just come in and fill in for, for Rao against right. uh, Sultan Singh. So, um, uh, what was supposed to be one match turned out to be six matches like, in the end. Wow. <laughs> so, basically, to put in context, uh, the dormitory shows, every dormitory show ended with a Battle Royal main event. So, right. everybody was in the main event, including Alexis Lee also. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, uh, Mr. Freus was in one of the matches. Referee Ryan was in one of the matches. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, this sounds like a fun show to watch, man. Uh, I, I hope SPW uh, releases the footage uh, publicly one day. Lah. I mean, mm. I mean internally, uh, they circulated it to, to, the, the, to their talent and to the ROR team also just to review in our private time and all that. And, and yeah, it was really fun stuff. Lah, because it's a lot like if you attend those... Uh, WWE live in Singapore, the house yeah. shows that WWE that house shows. on. Yeah. So the atmosphere backstage is really different because, uh, and it's not that they take the dorm shows lightly. Don't get me wrong; they still put in a hundred percent and all that. It's just that that it's a bit more relaxed, lah, and you're yeah. allowed to experiment. Yeah. I'm a bit so, curious because you mentioned six matches. So you guys have multiple dormitory shows throughout the weekend, or what? Um, we had one on Good Friday, so I did the Battle Royal and the the, the match before the Battle Royal. In fact. So everyone has a match on the card. Everyone yep. comes out again for the Battle royal at the end. Mm. And then I realized, I don't know whether Sway or whether because I'm the outsider or what. But every card, right, they put me in the second last match. So the match finished, I go behind, drink some water, then I come out come straight on. away for the Battle royal. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I think uh. that was the first Battle royal where I was supposed to last until the final four. Then I was like, oh my gosh, at the end of it, damn tired. Yeah. Whoa, like, yeah. I really, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> 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 so, like, like what? Uh. Uh, and then and then yeah, so so this was the trend lah. So I think mm. there was one the final show I was in a Southeast Asian title match against the former champion statement and big the triple threat. So of course in the main event you you got to like 
do a little bit more, you got to fight harder for the belt and all that. Mm-hmm. And then immediately after the main event, go backstage, drink water, come back out for the Battle Royal again. So, wow, like, wow yeah, non stop Battle Royals. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> but it's fun, la. it's fun. La. Uh, uh, um, it's always nice uh, 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 teasing eliminations and all that, like mm. hanging on to the rope with one hand, and then Sodic comes and like check your leg, and then leg touch the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then you can like hold the rope with one hand, and then you can tell right. him, no, 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 it's not yeah. touching the floor. This is a bit of a side track, but like, how, yeah, how, how does it feel to be back like in front of like the migrant worker crowd? Because I, I remember you told me previously that it's like one of your favorite crowds to perform in front of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's because I have uh, experienced wrestling in South Asia, in uh, Nepal, and in mm. India. And in, of course, in India, it was a Hindi crowd. And in Nepal, it's it's the Nepali crowd. And the migrant workers are mostly from Tamil Nadu or from other Southeast Asian countries. But, but I also enjoyed the fact that um, society is very different for these people. So they react very differently. It's very similar to wrestling in a overseas show, but here locally. Lah. And mm. also the migrant worker crowd is a slightly controversial thing, but they are... Uh, they have security teams attached to them. I, mm. I, I, I guess it's just the house rules for staying in right. the dorms. Right. So they are very afraid to express themselves, whether it's uh, booing or cheering. Oh. So one of the challenges like, like for, for, a number, for a few of us is to just make them noisy as possible lah, because mm. we realize there's a different style, you see, for working a migrant worker show compared to working in Topayo. Right. Or I'm sure like for the Grapple Max boys compared to working for their audience, it's very different sets of fans you are catering to. So the migrant workers, they like, uh, they like brawling lah, and then mm. they don't like cowardice. You know, like it's, it's just really very old school lah, when you do the, the, the migrant <laughs> worker shows. Lah. So uh, yeah, so 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 that that was that lah. So after I did the first show for them, and then I realized that because uh, they allowed me to walk out in the ROR uh, singlet and all that, mm. so I realized okay, this is it lah. It's this is the the marketing collateral that that, that I needed to, to to you know launch it mm. uh, substantially enough lah. Rather than like hey hi guys, I, I'm here and I'm doing a promotion and like there's no momentum behind me prior to this for like a couple of years. So, uh, I did one show. I thought it was just one and done. But in the end, uh, Andrew and Big T, they contacted me to come back for the next two shows. And then, mm. yeah, I was very thankful to them. Um, they also challenged me creatively by, by booking me as the heel. Uh, which is why I sent you guys the message uh, the other day uh, saying that uh, Trickster is right. He wasn't joking about me being the heel and all that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because I was working Sultan Singh. And then the following event, it was uh, Destroyer Dharma and uh, Sultan Singh again. Mm. So they just told me just uh, play play heel because these guys are gonna be cheered right? and they don't know yeah. any of these Singapore wrestling guys. Understood, understood. Because I mean, I mean, because of their race lah, in the sense. Uh, yeah. it, it it works lah. As much <laughs> yeah, as people course. try to like I shy away. Yeah, yeah. As much as people try to shy away from the whole jingoistic nature of wrestling, but mm. that's sports for you lah. You know, if you if you're from Birmingham, you're gonna support Birmingham. If you're from Manchester, you're gonna support. Yeah. You don't have Manchester clubs. It's just how it works. So, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, it, it really opened uh, uh, my eyes to a whole new world of wrestling that I didn't get to explore before because I've been playing a baby face for so long. Mm. And, and it's, I guess, both both uh, forms of uh, dispositions are difficult to play, but I uh, just was, was, it's new to me. La. It's new to mm. me. So, so I, I started watching a lot of Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett from TNA, Jeff Jarrett from uh, AAA and all that, uh, just to see. Uh, 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 how effective he was as a heel, and I just tried to, to, to implement parts of that into my act. Uh. So, so, so I just implemented stuff like cowardice, running away during the match, then uh, Sultan Singh and Dama grabbed me, throw me back in the ring, everyone cheers. You know, like and it was very nice to see uh, uh, this reaction for once. And I came out to do a promo segment with uh, Dama and Sultan at, at the second show. Mm. And we were supposed to, like, you know, mouth off with each other, some verbiage and all that. And then, like, like nobody wanted me to, to talk, man. Nobody was giving it to me the time of the day. Everyone just wanted Dharma and Sultan to, like, say their piece. And, and it was very refreshing. La. I, I specifically thanked uh, uh, Andrew and uh, Big T a lot after the, those three shows for, for uh, revitalizing my career. La, because I, I never thought I would end up playing a, a, a different disposition. And I guess this is the route forward for now, I, I think. I think especially with uh, the upcoming uh, event next week. Mm. That's interesting, actually. I never realized that you never really played heel until that very moment. No. So, no, yeah. No. Mm. Okay, so speaking of Ring of Rebirth, so mm. now in 2022, uh, we are looking forward to your first Ring of Rebirth event. Yes, yes, yes. 
uh, that's coming up very, very soon, of course. Now, yeah. um, it is a closed-door event, right? Yes, yes. It's pre pretty much a student showcase, okay. actually. So that's mm. why it's a closed-door event. So uh, invites are only extended to the friends and family of um, right. uh, my students. Mm. And also, um, a couple of invites were thrown uh, towards uh, SPW and to Grapple Max. So we'll see a, a little bit of people from, from everywhere. Ah. And uh, of course, to the, to the two of you as well, man. Um, we've spoke about it privately, but I guess yes. it's public now that um, <laughs> uh, I have uh, reached out to invite the both of you onto the show. Uh, so, will this be the model moving forward for you? Like, you'll have some of these like private shows, and then are you also looking at big, uh, you know, big events where you get uh, sales of tickets and stuff like that as mm. well? Yeah. So, so uh, I, I, I guess I'll just, I'll just put this forward, lah. I'm mm. very inspired by what both, I mean, by what uh, SPW and Grapple Max mm. have done because it's significantly different how both uh, models work. Right. And I realize now that I'm in a situation somewhat similar with my own crew and my own students. Um, it is a blank canvas for me to work on. Lah. So mm. I'm going to mix it up a bit. Uh, definitely uh, want to run a, a live event, uh, hopefully in the next few months or maybe end of the year or next year. Mm, nice. um, but I'm also trying to do this closed door, indoor taping so that my students will not feel, uh, mm. you know, too exposed when suddenly there is like 100 plus or 200 plus people coming, right. you know, that kind of thing. And then, um, uh, yeah, this is really just to give them some experience also to, to let them, uh, to blood them in with some of the veterans in the local scene and all that and to uh, just um, level up themselves uh, for lack of a better term. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I wanted to ask as well, like um, you talk about like training. I think we, we never really yeah. fully. Oh yeah, uh, we didn't touch on the whole students the, and, and the, the thing. Training yeah, but part, the, yeah. the one thing I wanted to add on was uh your training philosophy. So like, yeah. do you have like a syllabus or is it like more of like watching old things? Like how how are you gonna approach training? <laughs> syllabus. Uh, okay. Got ten year series I, or not? <laughs> I, I think I think uh, um, okay. So so I'll, I'll touch a little bit of my trainees now, but I'll go into their gimmicks later. Um. The thing about, about running uh, Singapore's youngest uh, wrestling school, right, is that you are definitely going to have uh, trickle-over members, people mm. who are formerly in SPW <clears throat> or formerly in Grapple Max and all that. Um, just to sidestep a little bit, our timings are generally quite uh, open-ended. It operates mm. a bit like a personal training business because um, I check with my trainees or they share with me their schedules for the week. And then we try to fit it around uh, the SPW schedule. Mm. So we usually, or generally, I go down about three to five times a week, maybe three to four times, but on a good week, it's five times because uh, you can't exactly align everyone to come at the same time. A lot of my guys are either, uh, they're either students or they're working like, like uh, around the clock shifts and all that. So mm. it kind of works for them because um, uh, instead of trying to commit to evening classes only, right? They, they, we sometimes do morning class or afternoon class. Then, like I said, lah, um, one one of my guys, he's trained in both uh, SPW and Grapple Max, so mm -hmm. he's seen like 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 he's 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 been everywhere, lah. Yeah. Uh, um, one of my guys, former SPW trainee, another one, interestingly enough, he is Singapore's first two promotion trainee. This guy, is seventeen year old kid, Barun, he is currently training with SPW in the beginner class, but he also mm -hmm. trains with us at Ring of Rebirth. So. Um, um, we applauded him lah, because it's kind of breaking the mold, you see. You are right. a gym member and you know, like, like some people, they, they buy membership to Anytime Fitness then they also buy Virgin Active, lah, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's either he's got a lot of money to spend, a lot of free time, uh, yeah. he loves wrestling or all of the above. Lah. Mm. I, I guess it's probably all of the above. Yeah, but he's a great kid. Great kid. Uh, so, so you get people who are coming in with some prior wrestling experience now, of course, you've got some people coming in with like no experience or they haven't mm. wrestled or trained in a long time. So uh, they do have a bit of a backing knowledge how our training differentiates itself from, from the rest. Mm. And I think for better or for worse, uh, it's a little bit regimented, uh, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So I'll just talk, I'll, I'll talk you all through a usual day with us. Um, so in case any listeners, uh, you all want to like come in for a free trial. Oh, by the way, we offer two free trials uh, mm. instead of one. 
um, I think because um, we see the other companies giving away one free trial, right? then like, who are we? Right? We are the smallest boy in the pond. So we give you two free trials instead. <laughs> la. you, you come and get a taste of it. If you like, then you stay. Yeah. If you don't like, there's always two other places for you to go. So we usually give two free trials. Uh, the training classes differ whether it's a group class or a solo class because sometimes people come in for like solo one-on-one sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, after the two free trials, the pricing is 20 for uh, <clears throat> a group class, 25 for a solo class. And there's pros and cons for both. Lah. Because in um, in a group setting, you get to wrestle with other people. Mm. Then, you know, you, you change according to their body type, to their speed, their experience level, blah, blah, blah. But on a solo class, I can help zero in a bit more and work on things you want to work on, lah, whether it's trying a new move on me. Uh, by the way, I'm the crash dummy. Lah. Every time they try a new move, I always just kena. So like, <laughs> oh, one session, no. maybe, yeah, maybe I kena like five hip toss or five body slams, this kind of stuff. But... <laughs> still young enough to do it so it's just, just take only like, before they mm. experiment on each other so uh, yeah so solo class like some of them maybe they are not really good at like push-ups yet so i can concentrate on like mm. uh, helping them like you know like with the chest presses and or, or squats or, or whatnot like. okay so that aside uh yeah we are a bit regimented like in a way got rules and all that like. but the rules are <laughs> with respect to uh the pro wrestling business like. So generally, before they even step in the ring, everyone has to wipe the feet on the apron. I'm not sure mm. if you've seen people do the wiping feet on the yes. apron thing before. Yes, yes. And it's a very case, old school thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And in case uh, youngsters uh, listening in or, or viewing this, they may not be familiar or they might have seen it, but they don't understand why everyone like cleaning the foot before going in the ring. Mm. Well, on one hand, on one hand, yeah, la, it's a bit of a hygiene thing. But on the other hand, also, you are paying homage to everyone that came before you. Uh. Mm. And and this is a, a very difficult business to excel in, and there are so many people who have paved the way so that like myself and uh, my students can have a chance to do this today. So compulsory lah, everyone must mm. wipe the foot before they walk in the ring. Then we go through some uh, basic traditional wrestling exercises. So we, it's a a combination of like varied squats, Hindu mm. squats, um, some jump squats, uh, sumo squats to work on the hamstrings. Uh, sorry, sumo squats to work on the groin, uh, um, frog squats to work on the hamstrings. Uh, my background in, in training, I actually have a zoo bronze uh, trainer set. I went for mm. a zoo bodyweight course a few years ago. So I do implement some zoo workouts into, uh, zoo functional workouts into the, the thing. Uh, and how, I well, how do you spell that? Z-U-U. Uh, Z-Z-U-U. Z-U-U. It's basically Zoom. animal movement. La. So, so mm. in my class, my classes, there's like bear crawls, uh, kick sits, oh. uh, lion push-ups, reverse lions. Yeah. Like so, so we do, flow. yeah, animal flows. Yeah, yeah, basically stuff like that. So we, we uh, do about, about three sets of, of everything. So we work on like squats first. Uh, then we do the, the lion push-ups or Hindu push-ups. Then we do mm. some like leg raises and crunches. So we go through three sets of that. It usually totals up to about like 300 plus squats. Uh, and then about... Uh, the, the, the push-ups and the leg raises are less. La. But it's right. just the old tradition of like the squats always must be like twice the amount or three times the amount. Mm. So <laughs> that's what they go through. Um, after that, we, we, we do some like planks and bridges to build the core, uh, neck bridges to, to protect the neck. And then we do uh, some basic wrestling drills, like mm. the international sport drill, the one where you see in every match, uh, shoulder tackle, the, the, you know, the, the duck underneath. and then, yeah. like, uh, Jump over, cross. drop down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, or, yeah. or ducking the clothesline, this kind of stuff. Um, then we also do some corner, corner drills, you know, like run to the corner, jump outside, mm. or like, you jump over the guy. And then that is the end of part one, lah. Then we all go for water break. So it's really quite regimented because like we, we try to like go water break together. We try to hold off the water break also. Mm. Not because we hate uh, hydration, but it's also to prepare ourselves for future matches. Like you don't see wrestlers drinking water during match unless it's part yeah. of the story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 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 everything, I, I try to structure everything with a reason. Mm. So, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Before the wrestling stuff, we do the, the gymnastic roles, the, the right. front roll, back roll and all that stuff just to get them uh, into like learn how to ring position and, and also learn how to move around the ring and all that. Yeah. Then usually the second half of class is the teaching part. So if mm. there are newer guys, we teach them how to bump or, or how to get up or how to run the ropes. Then if there are more advanced guys, maybe we teach them like variations of certain moves, whether it's chain wrestling or slams. Or sometimes if they are a bit more advanced, we teach them how to apply a beat down, how to do a comeback, how to shine, you know, just the components of a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. And... Yep. The end of my classes is usually quite fun. My students always say that 
my classes like got like a slope that, uh, like it starts like very serious very hard <laughs> then like become more and more fun towards the end uh. yeah. so <laughs> the end of the classes usually we we it's application uh. so first part is conditioning second part is learning third part is application um application is when we have like test interviews test promos uh and then we have practice matches and the practice matches usually consist of what you learn for that day and i try to to train them to like think on their feet so i, I tell them not to script out everything but to bullet point their stuff and then you fill up the in betweens lah and and it's, it's very heartening for a coach to see right because at the start like everyone them messy yeah. so even <laughs> i also a bit messy also but as time goes on you see them like like making a, a little less mistakes or they right. becoming more creative and all that and then it's uh um yeah, it's very rewarding to see like it's very rewarding to mm. see like like they are piecing together uh matches like on the fly and stuff like that but, but of course uh still a long way to go lah we are only mm. two months old at this point mm. and hopefully we end up becoming two years old 20 years old and forever right, right. yeah so, so so that's basically our class oh right. oh sorry we also end also got tradition also the ending part we will do a cool down together mm. um some uh yoga inspired stretches and all that just to ensure that we don't ache so much lah, and also to let the blood flow better. Then after the yoga cool down, uh, sorry, after the stretching cool down, uh, we'll sit in a circle and then we will shake each other's hands and we'll thank each other for their time and effort for the day. Mm. So it's always uh, uh, the opening and the ending is always the same. Lah. It's also to show respect to one another and to uh, build a bond. Lah. Yeah. Nice. So let's talk about the in-ring product and oh, what, what is your vision for the uh, Ring of Rebirth, right? I mean, it's an oversimplification, but SPW, their style is more like, you know, North American uh, sports entertainment, right? And then you look yes, at yes, Grapple yes, Max, yes. their vibe is more like New Japan style. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. mentioned Southern style for those who might not understand what that means. Mm, uh, mm. What does that mean? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's, 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 a good, it's a good representation or generalization of what you mm. said, lah. But I guess for us, um, we are we are going to try to be. It, it's not just going to be southern only, but it's also going to be character driven, like the mm. early '90s or late '80s kind of WWF stuff. So it's a bit of a, a mixture or a juxtaposition of both. So southern style where you have like beef with one another, and then you like mm. carry out feuds. Uh, um, the promos are like before the match and after the match. So that's something to look forward to uh, next week at, at ROR Press Start. I'm, I'm going to give everyone uh, promo time before and after the match. So it also oh. helps you understand why uh, person A and person B are fighting and all that. Yeah. Um, Does that mean you're training your students as well to learn promo as well on top of yeah. your training? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like I mentioned at the end of every class, um, mm. they will all cut a promo before they do the practice match against their partner. Lah. And then they will oh. also cut a post-match promo. Also. So it also mm. prepares them to or it helps them understand better like who they are going to be in front of an audience lah, rather than you know like suddenly in front of an audience you put a microphone in the guy's hand and the guy like fumble or something like that <laughs> yeah. yeah and it happens man because we're all not perfect lah. Yeah. sometimes we get nerves lah. Yeah, so 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 definitely uh, um, um, a bit more into like the whole like we're going to go back to the reason to or, or rather we're going to give people a reason to fight lah. it's just not mm. going to be like oh this guy versus this guy it's an exhibition or what uh, there's going to be motives for them to fight. Um, hopefully, some of the feuds uh, have like uh, longer, stronger stories to them. But of course, this is just still a tester event and all that. Mm. And the characterization part, I'll get into that soon. Lah. But basically, I try to give everyone a slightly identifiable character. Or even if you can't identify the character, at least it's something that will stick out in your mind. Right. Um, I'm a fan of uh, I'm a fan of sketch comedy. I like Key and Peele. I like mm. some of the sketch stuff on Netflix. Nice. And I realize that usually when they they go into characterizations of like their culture and all that, you just remember <laughs> the nonsense they pulled off lah. And and um, the only direct the only direct uh, thing that is in opposition to the Salvan style is that the Salvan style is pretty serious mm. uh, generally, but. The way I see it is like, uh, have you all watched NWA Power, you guys? Yes, yes. Right? I remember. Yeah. I remember. So, I really so... enjoyed it when it first came out. <laughs> right, right, right. And and it's it's nice how NWA Power not only uh pays homage to the Southern style, but it's also, I wouldn't say a parody lah, but it's also like a tongue in cheek take on the Southern style. So that mm. tongue in cheek take is something that I wanna uh approach uh, our brand of pro wrestling with as well. Yeah. Mm. Are you guys going to be creating content for internet? You know, the, the social media age, YouTube videos, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we uh, are going to tape next week's uh, tester event and then we're uh. going to release it as like a studio wrestling kind of show mm. online. Lah. And then we're going to try to do some other videos to help 
uh, flesh out the characters of these people. And then we are also in talks with some F and B outlets uh, to have some lifestyle stuff as well. Like maybe like the ROR guys go and like eat at this place, review the food. Um, oh. It was always always a dream of mine cool. to have big tea, big tea do like mukbang kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like who wouldn't like to see that, right? I, I've yeah. eaten with him many times, but I just feel that the rest of the world is missing out uh, on on not watching him eat. Like it's uh, right. something. You know, <laughs> Wow, so much joy, you know. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. so you're gonna create, uh, like, like, um, help create characters for your students mm. and as and present them as like, um, like characters for the audience yeah, online yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I think, uh, no, no, no. I think I was the one that uploaded it, lah. So we released two match cards already. Yes. Uh, mm. this week, um. Aaron O'Malley, who you may have previously seen in a Grapple Max show here in Singapore. Yes, um, seen him he's, perform before. Yeah, he's, he's an old friend of mine, uh, mainly because uh, I was a cheapskate when I went to AWE in uh, Malaysia. Right. I didn't want to buy my own hotel room or book my own hotel room, so I stayed in Aaron's house. But, but that's how we started becoming friends, you see. Right. Because uh, he was, he was li- living with like a couple of other international guys who I knew. So uh, Aaron and I have been friends for some time. Um, and he's coming down to, to run a, a seminar like, this week. And that's also directly related to... or well, not directly related. It's related to the, the Press Start show as well. Mm. So Aaron O'Malley, he, he's originally from Perth, but he's uh, quite a travelled uh, veteran. So he's currently training under Saraya Knight um, in UK. And Saraya Knight had a movie made about her recently, Fighting in My Family. He's uh, Paige's mom, Paige, right? Paige's yeah. mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, um, Aaron's been excelling there. Like, if, I, if I'm not wrong, I think he's still the current junior heavyweight or the light heavyweight champion of their promotion, uh, World Association Wrestling. So mm. for him to come come down uh, and to teach us and all that and, and teach, not just ROA, but we have people from Grapple Max and SPW who have signed up as well. It's really, really nice to see like all three promotions uh, training together under Aaron when he's down. Mm. Yeah, so um, that's Aaron. Doesn't really need much of an introduction. Um, um, most locals, uh, uh, okay, not most locals. I guess uh, 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 there'll be some listeners who are familiar with me, but if they're not familiar with me, I basically try to play a bit of a Eurasian stereotype. So easy going, but now that I'm playing a heel and all that, I have to be the bad stereotypes of uh, Eurasians, lah, cutting right. corners, lah, like a bicycle, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Lah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so, so that's me and Aaron. But um, to share a little bit more about my students, um, so we have... This guy who is called Ahmad Arif, uh, he doesn't want his real name uh, disclosed because... Uh, yeah, Ahmad Arif is not his real name. <laughs> yeah, it no, sounds Ahmad like a real Arif name. Not. So no, that's no, no, his no, stage name. name. Okay, okay. It's his, it's his stage name. Lah. It, double in a, a, way, double it, in a way, we are a bit like the NXT factory. Lah. We generate yeah. names for people. Lah. So, yeah, so that, that was a character conceived by my silent partner, actually. Because originally what Ahmad Arif wanted to present to us was... Uh, uh, something that we realized could already be found in many independent scenes. And, and it's not their fault, you see. It's not their fault. Because when they come in, often um, you will have an idea of who you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's sometimes up to the promoters or to the coaches to realize, or not to realize, to help them realize that um, you got to be someone for the audience lah, rather than mm. for yourself only. Or not what you think is cool. So Ahmad Arif, he, he has a full-time job. But his part-time job is he's a, a food delivery rider. He, he mm. started doing that. Uh, during the the pandemic to, to earn extra cash. And he still does it until now because like, he's got a family and all that. So, uh, okay lah. So we decided to make him a food delivery rider. And we said, like, Brad Hart giving the sunglasses, we want him to come out with a food bag. And then if you're lucky, you're sitting near him, right? He'll give you, like, drinks or, or the <laughs> that's, yeah. that's very good. Very creative. <laughs> right, right. And it, it's interactive lah. So hopefully, we, we want him to be, like, a... Uh, Dusty Rhodes from the 90s when he was in the WWF when he was the everyman the common yeah. man the common man the common, Dusty Rhodes so, yeah the working man yeah yeah so so likewise so we want Ahmad Arif to capture the hearts of Singaporeans who have to hustle you know you have to sometimes take a, right. a couple of jobs just to, to pay your mortgage or, to, or your, sorry your, your, your PTO loan or, yeah. or for your family and all that so, so that's so Ahmad will, Arif will he be sponsored by Food Panda Deliveroo or Grab uh, he works for one of those above companies. I shall not say it now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> oh, but um, uh, he's our very first uh, student who signed up. And he's also nice. the guy who's uh, wrestled uh, five matches for Grapple Max under ah, a different identity. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so he, he's faced some of the best wrestlers uh, in Singapore already because he's uh, had his debut match against uh, Enboss, Enboss Greg. Mm. So he's already coming in with like quite a bit of yeah. uh, experience. 
he's been there, done that, and now he's trying to uh, rebirth his career in a different way, like, with us, with Arua. And uh, he's also uh, trained at SPW originally, so he's also trained under Andrew and Vadim. And, and he was the first guy to sign up for Arua before we even launched. But then wow. again, because like he's, he's my friend and he's the, yeah. my silent partner's friend. La. So that's why he was yeah. like, yeah, I want to come and learn from you also. Okay, fair enough. Um, so he's pretty consistent. He's always coming down to train with us. And uh, we rewarded him with this opportunity to face Aaron and, and, and myself. La. I mean, it's more facing Aaron. La. Like he faces me all the time in training. Right, but this right. time, it's, it's a match situation. La. Uh, so, so he's teaming and, up with Big Good Jack, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, Big Good Jack, uh, unfortunately, uh, he's a very disrespectful young man. Uh. <laughs> after all I've done for him, after all the times I gave him advice, now you see everyone's talking about him, fighting against Sima, fighting mm-hmm. against like, people from, from Japan, and he's had like title shots, and you know, he's defeated Sultan Singh and all that. So, this is one of those instances and some of my friends, they feedback to me, they say it's a very strange way how Jack got his booking because he was calling me out online on the Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. I, I was calling him out also and then I, I was getting fed up with him. Then I was saying, that, oh, you know, you're talking so much, I'm going to put you on my show, I'm going to walk to the ATM now, I'm going <laughs> to draw money now, I'm going to like pay you match money to come to my show. Right. And you're going to face <laughs> international talent and you're going to face me also. So that's how Jack ended up on the card. Lah. So in case you are a young aspiring wrestler and you're figuring out how to like wrestle for other promotions, you you piss off the promoter. Lah. Then the promoter <laughs> angry with you. But he knows <laughs> he that you are talented. Ah, then he will book you and he'll book <laughs> himself against you. And then he will like try to beat you up. Lah. So that's how Jack ended up in the match. Lah. But nice. um, uh, it's also uh, very meaningful to me because uh, uh, Jack is one of those original guys uh, I, I took under my wing. And then yes. Ahmad Arif, of course, is uh, someone who's newly under my ring, uh, my wing and then it's nice to see how they are going to mesh together mm. um, and how they're going to like do against uh, Aaron and myself. Lah. So that is the advertised main event. Uh, mm. We only advertise two matches but I'll get into why later. So the, the second match is basically two of my new guys pairing up with uh, two uh, notable SPW names. Uh, so we have uh, Urfi and Destroyer Dharma and Urfi, nice. very interesting backstory. Uh, he was bullied for his sexual orientation when he was a kid in school. Mm. He is uh, openly bisexual uh, and he didn't have a good time growing up. Lah. So, of course, pro wrestling was an avenue for him to, to you know, uh, for an avenue for him to be inspired. Mm. And eventually, uh, now he's he's pretty young, he's 18, and then he started off with us and he's a fresh... Uh, he, he's not one of those guys who's been in another promotion before. Lah. Mm-hmm. He went for, I think, one Grapple Max open house or something like that. Yeah. So, I, I believe uh, he's actually a follower of the podcast and on the IG, and he I think he regularly listens to our show as well. Daniel, does, Lofty, right? On IG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah nice. and, and and he's he's one of the 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 toughest young men I I know. I'm I'm really very amazed at his uh, tenacity because he's also a dancer mm. also. So like he nice. recently I think a couple of weeks ago or a month ago he was doing like the training of us with all the squats and all his like core exercises and bumps all that. Then he took part in a dance competition after that, unbeknownst to us. Like. Uh, and then wow. he, won the, he won the dance competition as well. Way so to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Badass. It's badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and then I think a couple of weeks ago, he was supposed to go to uh, Pink Dot after training. Mm. Uh, and then his friends cancelled on him. And then uh, I said, oh, then what do you do after that? Well, I'm going to go and play football uh, until night with my friends and family. I said, like, what? How you play football when you do like so many squats? Lah? I go home and sit down and all that. Uh, <laughs> I stick and play football all that. So like, right. he really is one of the, the toughest young men I, I've known. It's a, it's a pleasure working with people like him and uh, Ahmad Arif. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I want to pair him with Destroyer Dharma because um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you guys... Uh, oh yeah, you guys have spoken to Dharma before too, right? Yeah. On your show. And, and Dharma has a very similar background of he didn't have it easy growing up also. He was a, a really scrawny kid when he was young. Mm. But I think he is uh, a role model for perseverance uh, and believing mm. in yourself and, and committing to your ideals. So I think uh, Dharma is a good external mentor from a different promotion that uh, can lend a valuable advice to someone like Urfi who is at this crossroads uh, of right. his life, you know, growing up. Yeah. Then okay. uh, on I, w- I want to know about their opponents because, okay, Big T is on the <laughs> other team, right? And I have to know about Mr. Gelang. Okay, <laughs> tell us about Mr. Mich- yeah, the floral shirt, so. the floral shirt uh, Mr. Gelang. Okay, what is Mr. Gelang all about? Yeah, so 
<laughs> so basically, uh, I just went through how, like, on one hand, we've got this inspiring babyface tag team, yeah. right? Uh, like Daniel Oki and uh, uh, Destroyer Dharma. And then on the other hand, I just grouped them together with the two laps up guys I know. Bro, so, his <laughs> pose uh, in the poster is like this. He's literally... Oh, he's literally doing, he's do, literally do, do, doing this. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he's, yeah, he's, exactly. He's making a bad sign on the poster. Okay, what on, is on his the poster, deal? Yeah. yeah, what's yeah. his deal? Yeah, so so what is his deal is is also interesting as to how uh, uh, Ring of Rebirth uh, evolved quite a bit also from what we originally wanted to plan. Yeah. So or, originally what we wanted to plan was like a slightly goody two shoes promotion of like you know like yeah this is a place you can come for second chances you can like, improve yourself and be your best self. But then mm. after a while we realized that it's play. Characters lah, play characters that, 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 that you know get the public attention. Lah. So that's why he posts like that, and that's why we approve uh, Mr. Gelang character lah. So he basically, definitely will catch people's attention lah for sure. Yeah. Uh, you'll be surprised. There are there are veterans from overseas who are messaging me about him lah. And they were like, they were <laughs> Wait, like, oh oh my. Is he a pimp or is he a, a frequenter <laughs> of the 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 Lorongs? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so I'll give you some backstory to him. Um, um, so why why these veterans from overseas are, are feedbacking to me about him is because uh, open secret about the wrestling industry in Singapore is every time we book foreigners, right, we put them in Geylang la, to stay because it's the cheapest hotels. La. Right. And, and we, okay. we all... Yeah, so... I never knew who, that. Okay. Who's who of, of, of international or regional wrestling all stayed in Geylang, la, whether it's like... AJ Pyro, Sarigala, yeah. Wonder Boy, whoever wait, wait. you see coming through. Which which hotels are these? <laughs> oh, your, your, your fragrance hotel with one on, whichever is cheapest on the XP. Then, it, then it. we will throw them there. It's so yeah. for fans who want to stock the wrestlers are basically. Like, go, just go get yeah, yeah. Go get just <laughs> just hang around you. under the coffee shop, you'll never know who comes by. <laughs> but and, 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 and back then, back then, because I was helping SPW out with like some of the foreign relations or some of these guys, their book is like recommended by, by me or by whoever mm. else, right? So we are the ones who have to pick them from the, the, the airport and bring them to their place of stay. And we won't reveal to them until we start to reach Geylang in the grab oh, or, in the, or in the car, you know. We'll be like, hey guys, by the way, uh, uh, this is the red light district of Singapore. <laughs> I hope you all don't mind. <laughs> too late too late yeah, bro too late. you're already you're staying here already. next 4-5 days <laughs> you're coming home to here every night so uh-huh. they will all share the same story la. all the pimps will be harassing them like hey oh sir sir God. come 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 uh, <laughs> so that's why like when they see this Mr. Gelang being uh, put in the insta stories or in the match card they're like laughing la. they're like oh my gosh you actually characterize the, the place and all that right <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Gelang, his backstory uh, is basically um, he works a full time job. Mm-hmm. He's got a sick mother at home, so he works his full time job to pay for his sick mother. You see, but at the same time, he also loves Gelang la. He really likes Gelang, but he got not enough money to go Gelang, so he signed up for pro wrestling right as a means to earn extra money to go to Gelang at night with the match money. He's an he aspiring Mr. Gelang. He wants to. He wants to uh, be a frequenter of the products. <laughs> From Audit. from what from what I hear him say in all the practice promos is that his aspiration is to be able to go Gelang every night la. and oh. in the daytime stay with his sick mother and work his job and all that. He, so, he, uh, he wants to go to Gelang to eat ho fun. Oh my gosh, you, you should hear what are the things that he suggests, <laughs> man. So like like uh, I already instructed referee Sodik. So as you saw in one of the previous posts, uh, referee Sodik is our director of discipline. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, because like he's been a head ref for so long. So uh, I already told referee Sodic check his pockets for the contraband cigarettes or the cough oh. mixture or whatever and all That's that. That's funny, man. So so uh, he encapsulates all of Geylang. La. He will gamble until the police come, then he'll flip the table and run. Um, very layered most, character. Uh. Got very layered. Very, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he will go to the massage. He said he wants to go to the massage parlor after the match. Then he wants to uh, uh, go to the different lorongs and all that. Mm. And then uh, he's paired up with Big T. La, because Big T, uh, I've traveled with him to a number of countries together. And I think like, like you know, like how the Star Wars thing got the prequels and all that. Then mm. Big T is basically the Phantom Menace version of Mr. Gelang. La. I'll leave it at that. La. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. So, so, so that's why in the in the write up also we put there the Deviant Tech team of uh, Big T uh, and Mr. Gelang. Right. So we we try to book them uh, alongside like minded people. Mm. And uh, according to Mr. Gelang, what he told all of us in Ring of Rebirth is that after the match, because um, you all know I've had some issues with Destroyer Dharma in the SPW show, so I I put a bounty on Destroyer Dharma's head lah. Mr. Gelang mm. will tell you all more at the show because you will go into detail about how there's a price money to be won if they can like take out destroy that, that will be his promo la, in a sense 
Oh, that's why he's going to say, like, he's going to talk about his sick mother also and mm. how he loves her, but he also loves Gelang. So, like, he's, you know, he's, that's he's a very layered character. Very layered, very layered. A lot of these people <laughs> all, like, like, they come from places and they want to go places, you see. So, that's why, like, pro wrestling is this avenue for them to <laughs> express their intentions. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Then, uh, um, you guys will also, uh, you guys will also hear from Barun, lah. Because I think he's in a unique situation where he's 17 and he's wrestling for both. Uh, he's training at both SPW and uh, uh, Ring of Rebirth. So we're mm-hmm. also giving him some time to like like uh, speak during an interview with our interviewer. Mm-hmm. Our interviewer is Mr. Jerome Douglas. I'm not sure if you all follow the Singapore Premier League, but he tends to interview quite a lot of local players also. He's got his own oh, podcast okay. uh, contributing to the local scene. So he's also a friend of uh, many of the wrestlers for many years. Lah. So he's What's his finding- IG? Oh shit, man! He's is it the Ma- Mafi Nilio? No, 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 no. That, that, that guy is uh, <laughs> that guy is one of Andrew Tang's friends, like, Who became my friends? Then he he did like a head massage for me. Oh, okay, so, okay. Solid, solid, solid bubble, la. Okay, Jerome is uh, uh, his IG is. No, I sometimes when people give fake IG handles, very hard. Ah, uh, <laughs> you Rose, not Jerome. E U R O S N O. B U J, yeah, U Euros, yeah, Euros, Euros, not Jerome, is it? Yeah, okay, Euros, not like E U, like Euros, yeah, 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 yeah. So he he's a photographer and an interviewer for the, um, the local football scene, lah. He's passionate oh. about uh, uh local sports and entertainment. Right. He also plays in a, a local music band and all that. So like I, I really enjoy having him on board the team. He's a, he's a friend of mine from uh, from National Service Days and he's attended mm. the very first SPW showcase which was of course also a closed door uh, invite only event mm. back then. So, okay, so it, it's yeah. cyclical. So now he's coming in and mm. he's uh, entering the wrestling industry as our he's going to be our all-in-one. Like. He's going to be our Mr. Froyce. He's also going to be our <laughs> Jesse the Body Ventura and all that. He's going to interview people. He's going to host the show. Right. Uh, a bit of Sean Rick also. So he's going to uh, yeah. host the show. He's going to interview. He's going to introduce people and Nice. Like all in one, because it's a small setting anyway. Only mm-hmm. about 20 plus 30 people will be around. So it'll be a very intimate venue where you'll see a lot of Jerome just like talking to, to the different wrestlers before and mm-hmm. after the match. Yeah. So are you uh, looking to add more matches to this card? Because um, card subject to change. La. Of course. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, another thing I like about pro wrestling is uh, do you all remember back then in the day, uh, Monday Night Raw or even Teddy Long SmackDown? Mm-hmm. Teddy Long's era of SmackDown. You tune in and suddenly got new main event, got yep. like a tag team match play out. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. One on one with the Undertaker. The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, I definitely want to bring a bit of unpredictability into uh. pro wrestling. Um, we purposely advertise two matches, but cards subject to change. Mm. Um, uh, and, and, and one thing that Mr. Vadim and, and Andrew taught all of us during our pioneer year in wrestling in 2012 is to expect the unexpected. Uh, and this mm. is something I definitely want to bring forward with uh, Ring of Rebirth also for, for you guys to expect the unexpected. Yeah. All right. So, so quick question. So like the seminar, it will happen right before the the event itself? Or was it, is it like an afternoon thing and then the event oh. is like its own? Uh, um, it's two days. So the seminar is running from uh, Thursday. Uh, it's Thursday afternoon, uh, Friday evening. The event is uh, Saturday at 7. So it's three days in a row where we are putting Aaron oh. to work on. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're making we making the most of Aaron's holiday, yeah. So yeah, he, oh, because he kind of flew all the way from UK for this, right? In a way. Oh no, actually no. He he's he's uh, and this is going to be a little bit important with, with which pertains to the press start event on on Saturday. Mm. Uh, his parents in law stay in Singapore, so his oh. wife's parents live here. So he comes to Singapore every two three years, which is uh, oh. uh how he he worked uh, with Grapple Max the last time round, and that's how he ended up working with with. All of us this time round, lah. Mm-hmm. So um, um, he put up a Facebook status about about him coming to Singapore soon, and uh, uh, usually when he comes to Singapore, we'll find time to hang out. I, I introduced him to like the you know the roast meat letter that the, the chicken rice yobak and the yeah chasis yobak duck rice. Yeah, I introduced him to that the last time round. He seemed to enjoy it. Nice. Uh, so 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 usually uh, I'll meet him for a meal and all that. But this time round, since I'm running my own thing, I was like, hey, why not you come and. Uh, Train everyone, la. not just my guys, but just mm. train everyone. La. So yeah, true enough, he's going to be training everyone, uh, okay. uh, which is really cool. And then he's going to do the show on Saturday. Uh, is the seminar slots like still open for people who want to like still give mm. it a try? 
So, um, uh, not sure when this is going up because we're going to try to talk a bit in future tense now. We so will this, we'll post, post this on usually Thursday, right, Mr. Young? We're going to do it yeah. right before the so, Friday weekend. Um, uh, sure. maybe, maybe not so important to push the seminar because Friday is packed, man. You've got mm. like former champions, uh, uh, um, yeah, people who are, are not from any promotion who have been like on hiatus for a while. Uh, is Thursday, it foreign you want to, uh, you know, start training again? Uh, bro, oh. I'm already training in the army camp. Uh, yeah, I'm you, I'm you at a reservist or something. Yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so 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 uh Thursday, uh Thursday we still got a bit more slots because mm. uh, it's in the afternoon, which mm-hmm. is pretty much like the ring of rebirth training time and all that. Uh, mm. But Friday we are pretty packed. I think it's gonna be, oh, it's quite a full house on Friday lah. Nice, there nice are a lot of people coming. Yeah, and then that's like, great. Like, that's great to hear. Yeah, it's wonderful, man. Because I, I, I think none of us uh, wrestled in Britain before. So none of us know how to wrestle the British style. But everyone kind of watches NXT UK at least a mm. little bit. So yep. it'll be really nice to, to be introduced to the British style of wrestling. Uh. So we're really looking forward to learning from Aaron. And I'm looking forward to teaming with Aaron as well. Uh, because, you know, like, Jack was irritating me. So we need to deal with Jack, uh, of Aaron course. and I. Of course. So talking about, like, you know, watching content, wrestling content, there's so much of it now. What are you watching? Mm. Oh shit! This is a this is a very interesting uh, question. Um, uh, you all are familiar with the butcher man. I think everyone yeah, knows the butcher. Of man. So butcher and I we have this exercise where every now and then we would text each other. We'd be like, "What's your wrestling remix?" And recently, I did this with uh, Prabhu also from Grapple Max. Yes. So the same same question you asked me. Uh, we'll be like, "What's your wrestling remix?" So we'll just name like four things that we are watching now. Yeah. So for me, in recent times, it will be like I said, Jeff Jarrett, um, very underrated wrestler. I think that. Uh, a lot of younger wrestlers can learn a lot from uh, watching his matches. You must have enjoyed his Broken Skull sessions, yeah? Oh, I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend fell asleep. La. She was saying that because she enjoys Karen and Jeff. The act. Ah. But then when she saw Jeff and Steve Austin talking all the insider stuff, she knocked out. She was like, oh, why are they so serious now? I thought they are fun characters. <laughs> okay. Because she's a casual fan only. I, sure. I loved it. La. So, uh, um, Jeff and, and, and Karen Jarrett, I think they're, they're active. It's, it's hilarious, man. Like, it's, it's just so fun to watch. Um, so, 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 so I watched their stuff uh, from AAA or from TNA. Especially yeah. in AAA where Jeff Jarrett just goes old school heel. It's just like Rudo. They call it Rudo, right? Just, just really a Rudo style and pissing off the crowd. Mm. Um, the other portion of my remix is uh, Dr. Wagner Jr. from AAA also. Mm. So he's a 57-year-old wrestler, still active today. Still goes better than half of the youngsters today. Still very fit uncle, muscular, handsome. He's a Mexican uh, guy? Mexican guy. And then like his matches, for some reason, he's always like bleeding crimson mask and all that. But very good storyteller. Lah. So yeah. I, I think it comes with age also. Of course, his earlier matches, he's a lot more athletic and all that. But with age, you see how he still is able to wrestle in main event style matches. So he still mm. knows how to command a crowd. And tell like a perfect story. So Dr. Wagner Jr., um, I think uh, the the also if young listeners or, or, or listeners who are, are not familiar with Mexican wrestling can look him up. Uh, very, very entertaining. Um, the entire Kevin Owens and Ezekiel story. <laughs> yes. That, that, okay. that, <laughs> that yes. is just something else, man. Like uh, <laughs> I think everyone would have thought, like, wow, Kevin Owens go from main eventing WrestleMania on Stone Cold, and then suddenly you put in this kind of story, but the more you watch every week, uh, the more you realize that they are onto something there, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Alpha Academy's uh, uh, involvement in the story is hilarious, also, mm. man. Just seeing how Otis spilled barbecue sauce on the DNA results, or like like Chad Gable was was very studious with the glasses doing yeah. the lie detector test. Well, it's fantastic, uh, it's, uh, um, and I definitely think grows like, on you, la, This yeah, story, right? yeah, yeah. And 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 I really am a firm believer of like wrestling should be fun and should be for everyone and. and not everyone should take wrestling so seriously. Or if you do want to take wrestling seriously, there are promotions for you to watch out there, mm. which, which presents a lot more serious stance on it. Um, yeah, so G- these three things. And Your fourth. Yeah, yeah the fourth. Uh, um, what was it? Uh? I think like some some like like Dusty Roads and Cody Road stuff uh, because I like oh. to I, I introduce my, my my girlfriend to like Dusty Roads because we are watching Cody Roads now right so I, mm. I show that oh so this is the father this is the guy he's always talking about and all that so we'll watch like highlight videos of him or like uh, uh, documentaries about him 
And my girlfriend's words are not mine. Uh. She says that, oh, so that's where Cody gets all the drama from. Uh, from the father. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes yeah, of course. course. Because uh, um, we are just huge uh, admirers of how well Cody Rhodes does uh, his emotional manipulation on the audience. Uh, it's, it's a testament to him as a performer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, um, I think today, um, today someone was mentioning uh, Meta, Meta from SPW he was mentioning to me today, he was like, oh, I can't believe uh, Cody Rhodes went back to the WWE after creating the competition for them. And then mm. I was saying that, yeah, you know, it's just wonderful storytelling, man. He's like, breach like mm-hmm. kayfabe, and he's like, crafting like this, like, crazy-ass stories outside of the ring also, and you just can't help but gravitate towards uh, whatever he does. Uh, and I think he got that from his dad. Uh. So, yeah. so, yeah, some Dusty and, and Cody Rhodes stuff I, as well. I think this whole concept of a wrestling remix thing is actually pretty cool. So, like, you guys yeah. just randomly take each other, okay, who are your four wrestlers or four storylines you are watching yeah, right now? you're watching right now. And it's, it, it's, it's a great way to uh, diversify because like, going back to a conversation I had with Butcherman uh, a few weeks or maybe a month ago was that um, he was telling me about a, a certain style that he wanted to work uh, mm. uh, when he was wrestling, I think, Dama or something like that. And, he, and then I said, that, yeah, why, why don't you, you, you try to just diversify uh, instead of watching the, the, the stuff? Because he's really fond of Kenta Kobashi. And he's mm. recently yeah. implemented this Kenta Kobashi sleeper suplex. Uh, at, at the recent SPW shows, uh, which is excellently done. Um, but yeah, so so we, we always encourage each other to diversify what we're watching and all that. Uh, try to pick up some indie stuff or some like British stuff. Oh yeah, yeah I've been watching some Moustache Mountain recently as well. Mm. The whole like Trend 7 trying to cheat to keep the title and all that. So like, so it, how it do fashions... You- how, how do you cherry pick these things? Um, you know, because you're talking about like very specific segments as opposed to watching like a specific show, right? So how do you mm, cherry pick mm, and mm, find mm. out like, oh, the Kevin Owens and Ezekiel stuff? Because to get there, you have to mm. watch the rest of Raw, which, you know, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so basically every Tuesday and every Saturday, I will like just watch uh, highlights lah, uh, uh. of uh, Raw and SmackDown and like, yeah, of course, I, I try to watch uh, Sean every week as well mm. on NXT or, or Level Up and all that. So, um, uh, so, so I'll just see like, from the thumbnails. Uh, then I, oh. I see like, hey, how come this guy, like, like he's obviously yeah. liars and all that. And then like, like, that's how I get into it. Like. Uh, mm. Then the other, the other picks, honestly, by accident. Like. Oh, so, okay. um, you know, nowadays in the Netflix age, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I can scroll like Netflix or WWE Network for like yep. 10, 20 minutes. Uh, like what to watch, what to watch, what and to watch. And not pick watch. anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Yeah. So, so, so it's a lot of it by accident. I recently started watching a bit of WCW Saturday Night as well, which is from the early nineties mm. when uh, Ron Simmons was the champion. Steve Austin was still with Paul Heyman. So, like, yeah, it's just a lot of wonderful uh, different presentations of wrestling that I try to expose myself to. I try not to confine my 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 wrestling bandwidth to just a certain style um, because I mm. think that will. That's what that's what turns a lot of veterans bitter. That's what turns a lot of fans mm. toxic. Uh, when you start to draw lines, you see, like, oh, I'm yep. only with AEW, or, yep. or, or I'm yep. only with New Japan. Then you you start to create this elitist mentality and this uh, yep. esoteric mentality when actually wrestling is created for everyone to enjoy, right? you know, yep. as many people as possible to enjoy. And, it's a uh, it's a great mentality to have because like when me and Young we do the podcast right it almost feels like we are obliged because of the podcast to like cover like current events mm. oh, but course, like course, if yeah. if we had that freedom to be able I, I'm I'm sure Young you also would enjoy like randomly <laughs> pulling out WWE network sure. as well yeah things sure. that yeah. We enjoy yeah. yeah yeah so that's a pretty cool way of looking at things lah mm. yeah it freshens it, it freshens up your love for wrestling like it real you you realize that actually. Uh, very hard to to have your love for wrestling stagnate because there's so many things to watch la. really yeah. so many things to watch yeah well and especially in this age too because a we have all this access to all the old mm. stuff right through the network yeah. through YouTube Correct. Correct. and then yeah. uh, all these companies coming out with new stuff I feel like there's mm. just too mm. much to even pay attention to everything anymore yeah like yeah. like yeah. even though we cover WWE and AEW right I find it is really too much. Oh yeah yeah because there's how many shows a week man like yeah. AEW has uh, five shows WWE has like five shows. Wow. Thereabouts. There, thereabouts. If you yeah. include dark elevation and, and, and wow, all yeah. the other stuff. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> you so, can tell we don't watch dark or elevation. <laughs> we we don't have that much bandwidth. Kenneth, we tried to watch. We did one episode on the podcast where we wow, just yeah. watched dark elevation. Yeah. Cannot. Yeah. It was a thing, uh. <laughs> it was a thing for once. Uh okay, so looking forward, right? Let's say yeah. ten years time. Where do you want to yeah. see Ring of Rebirth? Um I think I want to see us uh, uh, um, being a very collaborative unit. Uh. Mm. I want to see us uh, uh, doing shows. Uh, uh, I'm very open to this concept of co-branding shows 
So mm-hmm. I'm actually um, um, discussing co-branding uh, with a couple other promotions, hopefully in the future. Nice. So in the future, if like we can do more co-branding shows and if Ring of Rebirth can spearhead that or you know like mm. start the trend of that, firstly, promoters are going to save more money. La. Imagine mm. if like SPW and us share money or if Grapple Max and us share money. <laughs> then we're not going to lose that much money or like, you know, the ticket sales also both sides can share. Right, uh, yeah. yeah. And then like, like I'm also thinking of like, like yeah, co-branding not just in Singapore but, but of course overseas as well. Uh. Like, uh, doing a show in another Southeast Asian country or having another Southeast Asian country expand here and do shows here. Mm. And and um, yeah, as long as, as there's a place for, or as long as we are an avenue for students to train or for, for wrestlers to pass through, wrestlers from other promotions to pass through mm. or to have uh, avenue to have more matches with my students and all that. And hopefully steady uh, online content or steady supply of shows and opportunities. Mm-hmm. Then I'll be I'll be really glad lah. I I am very respectful of how SPW and Grapple Max have reached where they are, and it's very steady and all that. And it's mm. and if we even have a fraction of what these guys are doing, right? I would say that that yeah, it will really make me very happy, and, and uh, I'll be very happy that my students have these opportunities. Mm. Yeah. So so as long as we just keep up the wrestling ecosystem, nothing too grand. I don't want us to have like a WrestleMania style thing, or because that will make me even more broke. <laughs> so, so uh, 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 definitely, as long as we are able to do uh, what we can uh, within our parameters and, and just like yeah, slowly advance from there, uh, I think it will just be very fulfilling already. Yeah. So, in a way, Ring of Rebirth would be like the America Chavez of the the MCU la, of the Singapore wrestling scene. La. In a way, la, In a way, la, You do, can, do you all you get that use... reference? Because she's the yeah, one yeah. that creates the portals through the multiverse. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Like y'all, y'all can pass through, and uh, I, I always make it a point to like try to reply to everyone. Mm. Uh, uh, international wrestlers want to come here, or like other local wrestlers who want to work here, and uh, mm-hmm. I always try to just brainstorm with uh, uh, with them, like what what pathways we can work towards, la. I think, like I said, like, I think art is subjective, mm. uh, and and wrestling is also very subjective, and there's no right or wrong answer. So, uh, yeah, we can see what we can create together. I'm very open to collaborations with awesome. all sorts of companies if, and media. Yeah. If there's any way Kick to the Gut can support you guys, um, you know, covering your shows, sure. uh, helping sure, the, sure. introducing the audience or our listeners to you guys, sure. asking some of our listeners to even attend to your shows as well. Mm. So let yeah. us know yeah. how we can yeah. do that. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, like, like right now, we're still doing the invite-only thing and... and uh, it's a good and bad thing that we had to turn quite a few people away but mm-hmm. what we're going to do is for the next uh, showcase in the future um, we'll put those on the waiting list for this show onto that show ah. so at the same time it also spreads out uh, the audience and, and, and it also gives people something to look forward to mm-hmm. and then as for the, the grant collaborations uh, for example uh, I'll, I'll be really glad and, and uh, grateful if you guys can have my students on the show in the future actually mm-hmm. Because hey. I think it would be good for them to talk about their own journeys and, yep. and yeah. talk about Ring of Rebirth from their perspective. And then you all can also talk shit about me. That's fine. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it gives them that opportunity to also like call me out for whatever bullshit or whatever. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that would be great also. And, and if you guys want to uh, come down and check us out, whether it's for a training session or whether it's like to do some like uh, uh, shared media together to help mm-hmm. promote our characters. So if you all want to go on a Gelang tour with Mr. Gelang, oh, oh, we wow. can also arrange to record that. Uh, also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Young and Foreign uh, are Gelang tour. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. Must ask permissions from both our partners first. <laughs> yeah, right? It's for content. It's for content. As long as I don't have to take a speech, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. very happy. To like, do like, like what you guys said at our previous interview, like, what non continuity. I, I told my girlfriend about it also. I say that when I come on to kick to the gut, uh, when we talk about females or what, it's all non continuity. Yeah, like, non canon. Non canon. Yeah. Non canon. Yeah. Non canon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it can be Mr. Gaylang's non canon uh, <laughs> journeys into Gaylang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, mean, so yeah, we, we can always, yeah. yeah. Or your one safer option, Mukbang with Big T. La. You always, always <laughs> try Mukbang. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see, uh, really. Uh, the the podcast boys always open to host or commentate anything if you want us to do it, to do it sure. right? Sure, sure, Let sure. Let us sure. know. Sure. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, much. Before we let you go, uh, do you want to say something to the people? The people who, you know, have supported the Eurasian Dragon all this yeah. time, all this while? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, I think it's it's very humbling every day waking up, realizing that you're living your dream. Uh. It's a mm. very, very strange and very, uh, I mean, it's difficult, but it's also very fulfilling. So definitely thank you to, to all of y'all. Some of y'all have been around since day one. Some of y'all are just coming on board now. Uh, some of y'all may have... Uh, uh, stop lending your support and some of you are coming back to lend support and for all of that, you know, I'm really, really grateful that 
people have followed me on this adventure. Um, I've always been looking forward for phase two in my uh, wrestling career. And then like, I guess this is officially the start of phase two. And hopefully like MCU, there's like until phase seven or what. <laughs> but uh, uh, um, if you enjoyed phase one, I, I, I um, invite all of you to join me for phase two. If you are new, this is phase two. And you can always find phase one on YouTube or Facebook or whatnot. Uh, yeah, let's continue to grow together. And, and, and thank you for the support. Continue supporting me and Ring of Rebirth. Give us a follow on Instagram at Ring of Rebirth or follow me on Instagram at Eurasian Dragon. I'm most active there. We have Facebook pages as well, but mm. I think most of our activity happens on Instagram for now. Uh, mm-hmm. Eventually, we will branch out to Twitter and sadly, we have to go to TikTok also. Of course, oh, <laughs> of course everybody is on TikTok. Yeah, everybody yeah, has to. La. Eventually, everybody. have to go yeah. on to TikTok. La. So, uh, yeah, we'll stay tuned to our social media channels. We are going to try our best to put on engaging content and, and create engaging characters that will enter the Singapore and Southeast Asian wrestling landscape. Lah. So am I right to say Eurasian Dragon will be a head coach, a owner, a, and also content creator also now? <laughs> yeah, man. Wow, it's a lot. Huh. A lot to do on my plate. Lah. And then like, pets, like, huh? I, have, I, have a, I have a full-time job also to see to like, you know, office hours and all yeah, that. Yeah. So, so like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, um, the things yeah, you do lot, for your passion, lot, lot. the things you do for your loves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like what I said just now, like, like every morning you wake up living your dream and then you realize how surreal it is. Mm. And, and uh, um, I think some of my younger guys, uh, and this also can go out to people who are wanting to take up pro wrestling. Sometimes they ask for tips how to, to succeed in wrestling or how to stay on in wrestling for so long. And then like, like of course, fitness, charisma, looking the part, uh, sounding the part and all that, is, 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 it goes a long way, but I think the biggest factor is love. Right? You've got to love yeah. wrestling and, and, and it's yeah. the love that will carry you through and will help you persevere through the good times, the bad times and and keep you coming back for more. Right? So, just got to keep loving wrestling right? and to listeners who are drawing lines in the sand with elitism or supporting one side or another, I really urge all of you to try out the wrestling remix. Right? Just, just pick four different companies, mm. try it out and you realize how open your heart can be to uh, this beautiful sport of wrestling. Right? Come so, young. To, uh. Give me a four. Give me a four company remix. I'll give you mine. <laughs> oh, the company <laughs> remix. Okay, sure, we'll sure, see sure. next or, week. Or wrestler next week. remix also. Wrestler yeah. remix. Can can. Uh, you think about it, and you know. Yeah, yeah. Dragon, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, we yeah, certainly thank you appreciate. For having me. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, uh, we can't yeah. wait to see more of Ring of Rebirth. Uh, the future looks very bright for Singapore wrestling. Let's put it thank there. You. Thank at you. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm excited, man. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having you uh, on the show, uh, Young, next week. Uh, sorry we can't have you, uh, Foreigner. Uh, enjoy your reservice. We'll do our best. We'll yeah, do our best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best to enjoy it. <laughs> and and, and uh, thanks for introducing me to, uh, to Skype, man. Uh, mm. In case you viewers uh, are, are tuning in for... Uh, uh, sorry, in case you viewers didn't uh, realize or didn't know, it's my first time using Skype in wow. my life. Wow, okay, yeah, yeah. Never we're, used we're, Skype before. We're uh, <laughs> popping his Skype cherry right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah. lost the Skype cherry already. To be now. fair, we tried to do Zoom, but apparently Skype is more stable. So that's like a tip if you yeah. ever want to do live stream. Perfect, uh, Zoom every 45 minutes, the thing will cut off and all that. And, yeah. you know, yeah, and yeah, it yeah, eats yeah. up a lot of resources, but it is yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly, anyway, once exactly. again, Dragon, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we hey, will catch welcome. up again soon. We will catch up again soon for we'll, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week, man. And uh, yeah, foreign, see you soon. I yeah. will. Take <laughs> care, okay, take care. Take Bye, care, guys. man. Thank you so much. Kick to the gut. I like it. <laughs>